People can only love to the depth of how they love themselves. You can't give away what you already don't have for yourself. Yeah, that is, I feel like that applies to like a lot of things, not just, not just love. Um, when you think about people who are, who appear to be bitter or appear to be resentful or angry, I think that we need to step in with some compassion for that because people can't give what they weren't given themselves. For example, me, before college, I was, I was super guarded. I was very much like, oh, because I've gone through pain, you also need to go through pain kind of thing. Um, and therefore, you know, I couldn't give people that compassion because that was never given to me. I don't know what that looks like. Yeah. I don't know how that how to experience that. I like how, yeah, especially it's not just love. It's all the emotions because they never had that. They never experienced it, so they can't give it out. It makes a lot of sense. It's just nothing. They're kind of looking through a whole different prism almost of life. Like they're just in a whole different like kind of emotional level. Right. Essentially. They, they can't. It's not like. It's not they don't have that they have the capacity, they just haven't tapped into it. Yeah, they don't know what that looks exactly. like. Exactly. Yeah, you um, gotta get get to a happy place first. Because a lot of people, especially when it comes to relationships, they think, well, when I get that perfect person, then I'll finally be happy and I can enjoy my life. But the reality is, is that you get together with somebody because you want to share your completeness. Not mm -hmm. to complete one another because, you know, what you hear a lot of in movies, oh, you complete me, like the Jerry Maguire mm -hmm. line. And that communicates that I'm lacking something. And if love is about giving, then you can't give away what you don't have for yourself. And then you're saying, you complete me, meaning I need what you have. Mm -hmm. So that's no longer love. That's neediness. Right. And you basically not working on yourself to get to a happy place. You're like... Oh, that person's happy. If I get together with her, then I'm going to be happy. And so right. You got to, you got to get to a, a happy place because the reality is we're most attractive when we're happy and we're having a good time. Because a lot of guys are like, "Well, how do how do I meet girls?" So it's like, I don't. I never went out when I figured this stuff out trying to meet women. I was going out to have fun with my buddies, and if there were some cute girls, we ended up running into even better. Because mm -hmm. meeting women really is just a side effect of having a great life. Yeah. So if you're doing something you love and you enjoy socially, you're typically going to be laughing. You know, like all of us, my high school buddies were at the yacht club yesterday, just having a great time, laughing our asses off, having a few drinks, sharing stories about the past, whatever, hanging out with family, seeing a bunch of people that we, we knew there. And we're just having a good time. Mm -hmm. And just the whole day, people were coming up, interacting with a group, people I knew, people that my friends knew. Mm -hmm. And there's obviously a lot of beautiful, attractive women there. And it makes it easy when you're just doing fun things because your group looks like you're having a good time. Mm -hmm. Everybody's laughing and having fun. It shows that you're competent at life. You're competent in making yourself happy. And as a woman, obviously, if a guy's happy and he's smiling, he's enjoying himself, you want some of that. You know, we all feel good. When somebody comes around that's laughing, having a good time, they make us laugh, they make us feel comfortable, they ask us personal questions about ourselves, that makes us feel good, and then therefore being around them makes us feel good. Whereas if you're thinking, I'm a miserable person, let me find somebody that's happy and then they'll make me happy. I'll get some of what they have or they'll rub off on me. Right. And yeah, I think too many people come into you know relationships or whatever it is thinking – like, oh, I want something from you. And like Tony talks about this. There's three types of love, right? There is the the baby love where like a baby doesn't matter if they kick, scream, cry, or yell. They just have to get love. Otherwise, they would just die, right? And it's very one-sided. And there's two. He calls it horse trading or a.k.a. whoring where I will only love you if you do X, Y, Z for me, right? And then there's a third type of love where it's like that unconditional love. You love because it comes from your higher self and you just – it's just that you don't want anything in return. Um, you just love the person just because. It's loving without being attached to an outcome. Exactly. Giving the gift just because you want to see the smile on their face. Right. Um, so, yeah, I think 
I feel like it's also being yeah. authentic as well too. Yeah, because you're just living life. You you're not you're not searching for that desired outcome. I think that's a huge thing too. That a lot of guys make mistakes, even women too. They're trying to go out to find people. They're putting their whole hopes on the night if they're having a good time or not. If they find somebody, and then so you you don't do that. You you'll become sad because you're like, oh, night's ruined. Your body language will present that. You'll subconsciously put that out and make your chances even worse. And, and women will stay away from you because yeah. they'll you've given off some kind of weird vibe, like something is off. Yeah, you're kind of just like a creep, kind of like perusing around. Like they'll exactly they'll pick up on it because women are way better at picking up on the subconscious signs and body language. Yeah, yeah. There's an article I did years ago called "How to Get Women to Approach You First. and like if you notice, you typically go to any bar or nightclub. What you will often see, there goes the drill again. Yeah, what, what's up? For me? Yeah. Okay. Um, you could just... Uh, okay. Is there I'm a gonna microphone put it... that's muted? I'm, no, no, no. I'm going to put it this way. Because this is why. Cause Remember, I'm we've had problems with that, with somebody's microphone no, being turned off. 154 are on, yeah. No, no. It's because I'm go looking this way, talking this way. So I'm just going to put this here. Boom. There we Does go. That sound better? That's way better, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So typically what you see when you go to any bar or club or just where there's a lot of men and women hanging out is that you'll have different groups of people. And then there's typically like the guys that are single and they're out prowling. They typically got a drink and they're kind of holding it in front of their chest, covering up their emotional core right in this area because they're not comfortable they don't feel comfortable and they might have the other hand in their pocket and they're just kind of standing there and they're not really talking to anybody even if they're standing next to two or three of their friends they're just like scoping the floor out and looking around and they're not talking and interacting with anybody and i'm sure as a woman you've probably seen this before you're just the vibe that's given off is like something's off with those dudes over there and yeah, it's like they're in a hunt. <laughs> yeah, <something>. exactly. <laughs> and then you see a bunch of guys that are laughing and joking around and having an absolute blast. And it's kind of like they're not really even paying attention to anybody in there. And they're fun. They're approachable. And from a, it's possible that maybe they're all married. They're all taken. And that that's why a lot of guys say that when I was single, I couldn't meet anybody. Now I'm in a relationship. I got girls coming out of the fucking woodwork wanting to talk to me. <laughs> it's because they're giving off a different vibe. They're giving off, you know, when your needs are satisfied, when you have plenty of feminine energy in your life, you're just having a good time. It's like your cup runneth over, so to speak. And so therefore you feel very comfortable about yourself and where you're at in life. And then you oftentimes are hanging out with friends that are kind of in the same place. So you're giving off that non-hungry vibe, whereas you walk in as a woman and you see that, who do you who are you gonna feel safer being near? All the weird, creepy guys in the corner are standing by themselves, and there's no girls around them, or the guys that are just having a great time and everybody's walking by, and occasionally people come up to them and laugh with them, joke, shake hands. Maybe some girls come up that know them, hug them, and then they they go on, and you're gonna feel safer with. You know, because you see social proof. If there's cute girls coming up and hugging them like they know them, and those guys are having a good time, versus kind of the weirdos hanging out in the corner, you're obviously gonna stay away from the weirdos. You can just you can feel the energy. Yeah, you can feel the vibes different. Yeah, it's totally different. Yeah, the the higher energy, like with friends and everybody, just tells me that the guy is just like socially intelligent, emotionally intelligent, and they're competent Pick, as yeah, men. Yeah, picks up social cues, but the guy that's just in the corner just tells me that like, oh. You feel like something is lacking, which is why you're here. It doesn't seem like, yeah, just holding a drink. It just tells me you're insecure about something um, and that, yeah, you're just lacking self-confidence. And what women look for is, like, confidence. You know what you're doing. You know what you want. Um, and you're just happy, you know? That's Yeah, typically what I tell guys to do is to go into a high-traffic area, maybe near the bar where everybody's got to come and get their, their drinks, one of the things you can do when you first get there is what I call, you know, I, I can't remember who I learned it from years ago. It was called the mayor campaign. And you just go around the bar and go up to the groups of cute girls. and Hey, ladies, you having a good time? And then, you know, clink your glasses, cheers. And then you roll on to the next group. And you go make a lap around the bar. And then you don't stop and talk. 
And you, you know, because most a lot of times you're getting approached by guys that oftentimes don't have game or whatever. And these guys come by and they're partying. They're ha- like my friend yesterday that we were hanging out with. He's like he's like the life of the party, and he's just out to have a good time. And he likes to spread that joy. And so he's one of those kinds of people that when we go out, he'll go up and talk to total strangers and engage them and kind of pull them into our party, if you will, our world. And then you go, you know, you go back to you know a high traffic area after you did the little mayor campaign, and you just have start having fun with your friends. You don't really pay attention to anybody, and then you'll notice as the women walk by, they're kind of looking in the circle, like oh, that's where all the fun is, mm-hmm. and like they're looking for an invitation, like for a guy, hey, what are you girls up to tonight? And then as they mm-hmm. walk by, maybe it's sometimes they're the girls that you went and cheered, and then women are gonna wonder why didn't they stop and hit on us or talk to us? And then they see you going around everybody like that, and they think do they. The owners, they they own the place, or who who are these guys? And you become curious because mm-hmm. you got the group of people sitting in the corner all by themselves, holding their drinks in front of their chest, and then you got these guys that go around like they know everybody, like they own the place, and then they're just then they end up in their group having a good time. Mm-hmm. And then as you know, as you watch them go by, what happens is groups of girls start coming over, and then as soon as the first couple of girls come over. And you talk to them for a few minutes. You're like, hey, you guys have a great night. You know, Maybe they're not very attractive or whatever, but you're still going to be friendly. And you're like, hey, I'm going to get back to my friends. It was nice, nice meeting you guys. Have a great night. And then you go back to your friends, and then another group comes by. Same thing. And then women that are watching this, typically what I've noticed years ago when I would do this, is that the quality of the women that start approaching the group goes up. Mm-hmm. So it's like they watch for the social proof, and then the really hot girls – start coming over because they figure, well, you guys are safe. Because all these women are coming over and hugging you and talking to you like you, you know them. Obviously, they got to be safe because they're social proof versus the weirdos in the corner that they're not talking to each other and they're not talking to anybody. Mm-hmm. So that's what typically starts to happen. And then within 10, 20 minutes, it's like you just got a steady stream of girls coming by when they come to the bar and you'll see the same ones. And the ones that like you will start lingering. Mm-hmm. And then you you know you look for the signs that are in the book that they're attracted. They're playing with the hair, touching your arm, la- laughing at your stupid, not funny jokes. <laughs> body that, language. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The body language is turned towards you, and it makes it really easy. Then you don't have to go out to pick up women. The women actually make it easy for you. And women like you, they put themselves in your orbit. Just like if you're at a gym, you're working out and having a good time, women will come and literally sit in a piece of equipment right in front of you staring at you so you have to make eye contact and they smile at you it's so easy to engage them in conversation when they do that yeah that's true 